Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing with some new stencils from Darkroom Door and showing how you can layer stencils really, really easily. So I'm starting in my Large Star Illusions journal and I'm starting with a technique that I've been using a lot recently, which is um, when you don't know what you're doing, just scrape on paint. So I'm just layering up um, my acrylic paint putting on a color, drying it, putting on another color, drying it, and so on. The, the drying is a really important part because with acrylic paints, um, once they dry, they're permanent, so they will layer over each other, they're not going to mix and blend, um, which means, as you can see later on, I can put greens, I can put yellows, I can put all sorts of different colors over these um, darker colors, and they will stay separate. So it gives you a great opportunity to just play around with your favorite colors and make something that's out of the box and strange and wonderful and looks, you know, a bit like a rainbow thrown up all over it, but that's okay because it will work out in the end. So as you can see, some of my paints are getting uh, very low on paint. I actually keep them um these are the Dina Wakely paints so I keep them all stored upside down so I'm quite excited for the new dilutions paints that come um, that they already sit naturally upside down because mine sometimes have a little collapse if I take too many paints out at once um, but it's a good way to get every last drop of paint out if you do get to the end of a bottle um, I really highly encourage you to actually cut the bottle open because you'll be so surprised by how much paint is actually still in there so I'm just balancing up the colors on this page and that's the great thing about this technique you can sort of go there's no limit to where you stop or start so you can keep adding and adding until you're happy with the balance so I was finding it was a bit top heavy with the red and I wanted some more blue colors in it so that's what I've added over the top so I just pulled out some turquoise and because it's me I also add in some neons so neon paints are amazing um, they're translucent what they do is just bring brightness and luminosity to your page so you can see that with the green it just suddenly pops off the page it's a bit like putting a filter over one of your, of your photos you can still see everything clearly um, but it's just the brightness has increased on it so um, the Neon paints are acrylics as well, so again, just as the other acrylics, they dry permanent when they're, when they're set, so um, it's not going to rub off or change. Once I had done this, I decided I wanted to add in some stenciling. So when I have a busy background like this, I like to go back over with some stenciling, usually in neutral colours, so whites and dark greys, to sort of tie everything together. And I'll, already you can see just putting that little white over the top gives a little bit more flow to the page and it can be totally random it doesn't need to be in a particular place you can just spread it out now you'll see with I'm stenciling I'm putting very little paint on my um, sponge and just tapping up and down I'm also tapping my sponge out on the glass beforehand which means I don't have a big blob of paint sitting on my sponge. If you have too much paint, that's when you're going to find stuff bleeding through underneath and you're getting a bit of a mess. So this is one of the new darkroom door stencils, which is called Jumbled Alphabet, I think. And then I go in with another one. This is a mic making um, stencil. And I'm using Payne's Grey. <laughs> you know they're new stencils, they don't have any paint on them. Um, that's not because I look after my stencils. Uh, it's just it's because it's brand new all my other stencils are covered in paint so um, yeah <laughs> welcome to the, the, the destruction of this stencil um, the paint I'm using is Payne's Grey um, very rarely do I use um, stencil in black because I just find it too overpowering um, this color gives you a really lovely blackness to the page without um, having by being too opaque I suppose you can still kind of see through it. it's got a slight translucence to the um, the paint overall so I'm just going in and finishing off my stenciling you'll notice I tend to stencil sort of in threes um, I tend to do everything in threes 
The reason for that is just it gives a good balance to the page and it's just a good rule of thumb. I don't have to think about it. So if I put it in three places on the page, I, I know I've sort of balanced it up. So you can see that chain one's gone down three places. The little stripey one, I've got three lots of them. Um, with the, the white in the background, there's sort of three main parts. I know I added a bit more, but there's sort of three main threads of that going through the page. The final thing, I'm just going back because, you know, I had some space why not and I had some paint left over I'm just mixing the white and the gray and going in with the number stencil over the top just to sort of fill it up now even I admit at this stage that that's looking very very busy and it doesn't really have a place to go so when I have pages like that uh, this technique is what I usually do which is called redactive painting and masks are fantastic for that and this is another dark room door stencil that um, is obviously a mask so a mask is like the reverse of a stencil um, you get to keep what's on the inside so I'm again using the Payne's grey and going around the outside and when this is finished you'll sort of understand what I mean about that uh, the Payne's grey being a little bit more translucent because you can still see the colors and the patterns underneath so um, particularly I've had a lot of comments in the past you know you do all these backgrounds and then you cover them over what's the point of doing the backgrounds well the point is you you know close up you can actually still see them so um, it just adds to the flow of your page it means those heights haven't appeared out of nowhere they actually belong on that page and you've done something to layer over it to show that you're making a focus of it I suppose um, by blacking out or darkening the areas around it it just draws your eye to those heights straight away you still get to see the the funky background underneath but it's a little bit more controlled now than it was before so I decided I wanted to keep the color on the other side so you could see what the background looked like originally and um, just to balance up the page somewhat and now I'm just going in with a Posca paint pen and just drawing sort of really scribbly lines around my heights just to give them a little bit more shape. I wanted them um, interlinking, but they kind of lost their shape a little bit. So just by having a paint pen around it, just to give it a border really helps to define them again. So once I'd done that, I decided because I had it, why not use it? The mask that I used comes with the stencil as well. It's called Fading Heights. So it had this really cool sort of ombre, ombre effect, I don't know, gradient effect of heights go, you know, going from bigger to smaller. So I decided that I use those going down my page and I've just decided to um, reverse it. So I'm going from big to small to big and then back to small again. So I've sort of got that growing and um, getting smaller across the page. You don't have to do that. It was just, you know, I had time. I had time. I was <laughs> playing in my um, stash, and I thought, oh, why not? So just again, using up the leftover paint I have, and adding in the little um, hearts as I went. I'm having a really bad day with words today. I'm struggling speaking to the students in class today, and they started having to guess what I meant with my hand signals. So once I finished doing the heights, I decided to go back and do a little bit more definition around my heights and adding some black in. I think, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm doing, yep. Yeah. Um, now that seems a bit pointless, but in actual fact, because the background isn't black, you can actually still see the black pen. And again, in the close-ups at the end, you'll sort of see that a little bit more clearly. The other thing is you can see I'm being really loose with my lines. I'm being scribbly with them. I'm doing more than one line. Um, that adds to a sort of really arty, sketchy look to your piece. Um, if I had tried to outline that perfectly and made a mistake, it would look wrong. By having really sketchy lines going all over the place, it actually looks like it's supposed to. I don't understand how that works, but it just works. So um, if you make a mistake, go over a few times, make it sketchy, and I'm sure everyone will think, oh, that's how it's supposed to be. The final thing I added to the page is, obviously, for those people who follow my channel know I love quotes, and this one really appealed to me and was just perfect for this page. So I tend to look up in... Pinterest for my quotes and I think I looked up colorful 
colourful quotes and this one was um, you are my blue crayon the one I never have enough of the one to colour my sky I just thought it was perfect so to pop the letters out of the page a little bit I'm going back with a white pen just to highlight the edges and um, yeah pop the back black pen out of the background for the first the U I actually had a um, chrome paint pen which I thought the silver would be really cool on this page but it just didn't give enough um, definition so I went back once it was finished and um, added the white into the, the top and you can just sort of see the difference again for a lot of this on screen it sort of looks like it blends into the background but when you sort of look up at it close you can actually see it quite clearly so this is my finished page playing with all my new products oh no it's not because I put some stickers on the hearts so that's my finished page I just found some of the love quotes from um, the Tim Holtz little sticker pack which was just a really nice addition so this is the close-up of my final page again you can sort of see the background coming through that Payne's grey and it's just a really cool technique to um, block out a busy background so if you've got something you're not sure what to do try masking something off or layering stencils over the top and see what happens it's all about experimentation in the end and having fun so break out your supplies and go for it thank you so much for watching please check out some of my other videos if you haven't seen my channel before and until next time bye for now